You know, my, uh, my first guest reportedly once said that, he said, quote, I'm, I'm out of step. I'm not a religious fanatic. I don't use drugs. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm reasonably sane. Now, who could have said that? Would you ever believe Frank Zappa? That's who said it. Here he is, Frank Zappa. I gotta, I, I gotta tell you, first of all, it's, it's great meeting you. I, I've great always been a too. fan of yours, long time. And one of the things, you know, recently I became an, a, a reunited with a fan of yours when you started with the censorship business, that uh, when the lyrics were being challenged in rock and roll music. Mm -hmm. Now, how do, do you feel that lyrics of a song really can sway people or move people around? In a negative way, I mean. I don't think so. I don't, there's no science to support it. It's, you know, to, as far as I'm concerned, that's pure fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what about, uh, you know, they had all these, that there, there were sex lyrics and all that, and, uh... So what? Sex is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the, the idea that if somebody writes a song about suicide that you're going to hear it and kill yourself, I mean, where is the science to support this? I mean, sometimes people just get carried away with their, you know, hobby projects, and I think that there was a little bit of that going on last year. <laughs> well, when they, when they say that, uh, you know, it's always been the idea since the 50s when rock and roll first hit that rock and roll was driving kids crazy and yeah. disturbing, that the music itself. Well, you have to look back at what um, those early pamphlets were and who, who was distributing them. They were distributed by racist organizations and with a fundamentalist religious bent. You know, saying that, uh, you know, all of the early bias against rock and roll started off as a uh, racist bias. And then as rock and roll started be, to be performed by white people, then that shifted to something else. But, you know, at the heart of it is a kind of a sick attitude toward music and toward what people do for enjoyment. People are entitled to enjoy themselves. You have a right to enjoy yourself. You do not have the right to hurt somebody else while you're enjoying yourself. Well, when you get down to the, you take the great classical music that was written, some of the most beautiful music in the world, and at that time they had the Crusades, mm -hmm. right? They had all that wild, you know, they had the Hundred Year War. Yeah, they had all that stuff, right. you know, but... It wasn't the music, right? They weren't listening the to Mozart and saying, let's go out and kill Spain. You want to... <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know what has caused more wars, more unhappiness, more misery, more problems than anything else in history is religion. That is the basis of it. But it's, it is not, but you have to look at what really happened there because it is the people who sell you the religion and the way that they try and mold you into using their product. And when they say, we got the only one, ours is the best, those people don't believe like we do, we must kill them, that leads to war. Yeah. You know, and it's, it has, still happens today. The Middle East, it's, you know, it's religious war. If you, if you kill someone, even if you convince them you're right, they're now dead. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it doesn't you know, make any sense, it's, right? it's a strange form of uh, social engineering. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, when you have, uh, now at the same time you have the classical music, now you have uh, like country and western music. Yeah. Now in the, in the area, country western, part of the country that where we have that music, you still have crimes. Right. Those people aren't listening to rock and roll. They're, They're listening, listening to right? cowboy music, right. Okay, but it's not the music that makes them do it. It is something else that makes them do it. Yeah, it isn't like these, you know, these, these uh, whatever they're calling these murderers now, chain murderers, or, you know, the mass murderers, they, yeah. they give them a new name. Used yeah. to be mass murderer, yeah. now it's something else. A chain. Guy's not sitting there. Serial murderers. Serial, that's, that's a better name. Maybe cereal. it's in the cereal. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> no, the, the Nutra Sweet murderers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, or artificial sugar. Well, that's you know, good right? you artificial think about sugar. It. How many people you know drink only diet products, diet soft drinks? Check this. Next time you talk with somebody and in the middle of the sentence they forget what they're saying, <laughs> ask them if they just had a diet soda. <laughs> Try it. You'll find out that I, I have a theory. Nutra-sweet ruins your memory. <laughs> you know? And that's why they put it in everything. <laughs> you know? But then if you ask them, if you say to them, you know, like guy says, you know, I wanted to tell you about, and he forgot, and you say, well, 
Did you just have a diet soda? I don't remember. He's going to say, I don't remember. <laughs> That's right. That's your proof. Yeah, and there's your proof, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, when you have... Uh, now, as far as your kids, you have four kids, right? Yeah. As far as your kids, do you, what, do you let them listen to any kind of music they want to listen to? Sure. You, you don't censor anything? No. You just let them let's say, all right, you listen to it, no matter what the words are in it. Yeah. Because there's no... You don't feel that there's any reason that they... If I had my way, they would listen to more instrumental music, but they're not interested in it. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, let's say they're normal teenage kids to the extent that they like normal teenage music. I, I wish that they were more interested in classical music or things like that, but I'm not going to force it on them. Yeah. And eventually, if they, you know, stick around music long enough, they'll come to discover it for themselves. But I don't think there's anything in the lyrics that's going to hurt my kids or anybody else's kids. Right. It has, the motivation is inside of the person. Right. I mean, you say, you know, go out and kill the mailman, unless the guy really hates the mailman, he's not going to do it. Or unless he's had too much NutraSweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back and meet two of Frank's kids right after this.